Welcome to QLab. Today we'll be carrying on from where we left off with the extraction video and we'll be looking at how we can separate the colours we extracted using chromatography. If you'd like to follow along, all the equipment is in the description box and again we'll be using isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol so don't do this near any flames. Make sure you've got your lab specs and if you can, have a well-ventilated area, like a window open, or even, because it's so sunny, you could do this outside. Now, the way to think about chromatography is that different molecules, or different things, can interact with a surface in a different way. So I'm going to use an example here. I want you to think, imagine there was a carpet of Velcro. If you had trainers on, you'd run over that Velcro and you wouldn't even feel it. You'd be very quick, so you wouldn't interact very much with it. But if you had big woolly socks on, well now when you're running, you'll be sticking on that Velcro and you'll be really slow because every time you've got to pull your leg up on the Velcro. Well, it's just like that with molecules. So when we put a mixture of molecules on a piece of paper and run this technique called chromatography, the different molecules in that mixture interact with the paper in a different way. Some of them move slowly and some of them move really quickly. And so we separate our molecules and we're going to see if we've got any different interesting chromophores that means molecules with colour in any of these samples. Now this technique is a little bit tricky, so we're going to go through it together very carefully. Now firstly, I want a little piece of paper that is a nice rectangle and I've done a ruler line along here because what we're going to do is we're going to put our sample, our mixtures on this line and then we're going to place it in a glass just like this one, with a little bit of solvent, a little bit of liquid at the bottom. And we're going to use exactly the same liquid we use to extract with that isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. And that's going to slowly move up the piece of paper. You may have seen this before with water on things like kitchen roll and whatnot. They can go up the material. And as it goes up, it's going to carry the molecules up the piece of paper. And we'll see them separate, just like those runners with on the Velcro, we'll see them separate into different molecules. And we'll be able to tell what different constituent parts we have in the solution. But first, I need to label up. So I'm going to put a little dot here and a little dot here, just so I know I'm putting two samples on this one. And I'm going to put a G. And the G is for my grass sample. And a C for my camellia sample. And on this one, I'm going to put a P for my pulmonaria sample. And an F for the Forsythia sample. And the same drill over here. D for my daffodil sample. Now, I can't use P because I used that for pulmonaria. So what I'll do is I'll put P, R for the Primula. Now the reason I'm using pencil is because pencil won't move with the solvent. If I put a pen on here, some ink, when I put it in the liquid, the ink would move as well as all the molecules. That wouldn't be any good now, would it? But now we need to add a little bit of each of our solutions, each of these extracts to our piece of paper, to our sheet here. Now I'm using this because you've probably got one of these around the house and you need to be a bit careful with them. This is a needle and I'm going to use the eye of that needle to collect a little bit of solution. So if I do that, I now have a little bit of solution in that eye. Now I'm just going to place it, let me see where that spot is. 
and I'm going to do that a few times so I can hopefully see any colour. I will place it if it works. I don't think I got any on it that time. Now if you have a little pipette or something like that, you can use that because that will be a lot quicker than this. But I want you to be able to follow along. So I was trying to think of something you could use around the house. Remember between each one, each time you use it, to clean it before you go to another sample. Or else you'll mix up all your solutions on the needle as well. That's them already, and you can already see that some of these colours are very faint. And that's because these aren't, we didn't do a big extraction. We could really, we could let this evaporate down so it gets a more concentrated solution. That means the colour is, there's more of that colour, but in a smaller amount of solution. And then we'd pop it onto here. And you can barely see anything for the pulmonary. But now what we're going to do is we're going to run these chromatography pieces. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Oh, there was one thing. though. This is too big of a spot. I got a little carried away. Really, we want it to be about this size or this size. Not too much bigger. Because then they don't have a good time, an opportunity to spread out properly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the daffodil and the primula sample. And I'm going to put a little bit of the rubbing alcohol isopropanol in the bottom of this glass. I want to have about half a centimetre off the bottom. There, that looks lovely. And then what I'm going to do, and I'm just using a pair of tweezers because it's easier to control. Ooh. Is I'm going to take a piece of paper like that and I'm just going to drop it into the solution. There. And you can already see the liquid starting to work its way up. And I'm going to give the cup a little hat. And it's got the little hat so that we don't evaporate too much of the liquid. Now if you look closely, it's a little bit harder so I'm going to try and zoom in for you. You can see ooh, starting to rise up the piece of paper. Okay, so after a very long time that took a lot longer than I was expecting it to, and I'm actually going to stop it early. So you'll see how we stop it. Just lift the cap off, take the piece of paper out, and it's wet. And then we'll just turn it down so you can have a look. And I will very quickly just draw a line to where the solvent got to. And in fact, while that one was running, I also set up the other two. So we can 
and do the same process for those. Just draw a very quick line and let them dry. And just sort of waft them a little bit to help them dry quicker. We can do it with the see what we can see which I know these are very faint so it's a little bit hard to tell so what I'm going to start to do is use my pencil to circle things that I can see so here oh sorry about that here with the primula I can see that there's still a little bit of something down here but there's also a little bit yellow thing there and in fact if you see you might be able to see some faint streaking of a purpley light colour there so I'm just going to do that like that on the daffodil I can't see anything down here in fact all I can see is some yellow up there With the Forsythia I can see a little bit of orange down here and a little bit of yellow up here. It's interesting isn't it? These two compounds travel with the solvent. Now I can't see anything on here but it was very very difficult to see anyway wasn't it? And then we, we've got this one here. That didn't move at all. It was like the one with Velcro on. Uh, with uh, woolly socks or the velcro it couldn't move very far at all and then the greenish colors all the way up there and it's big mark because I did too big of a spot didn't I so what can we tell from these little experiments well we can tell that the color in the camellia plant and it started to actually go a bit bluey it might be oxidizing won't move up the paper at all. But the colour commands in grass, they moved up the paper very quickly. They basically stayed with the solvent. So they moved as quickly as the solvent did. And that tells you that they don't they weren't interacting much with the paper. So it was like the, the one with trainers on, just sprinting across. There wasn't much stickiness. Now in the, uh, oh yes, we couldn't see anything in the pulmonary or lung wart. But in the foresight, there were two things. There was this one here. Now this didn't move at all. It was like the one stuck and they couldn't get very far. But then there's this yellow colour. The daffodil had that as well. And that moved really far. It stayed with the solvent. So it didn't interact much with the paper, did it? And possibly these two compounds, these two molecules are quite similar because they both travel really quickly with the solvent. And then we can look at the primula and it was very interesting because it actually had a yellow color come out as well. But it had this purpley color which dragged out, it was very faint, very hard to see. And then it had something that didn't move at all. So we can start to think about how these different molecules can be characterized because that primula color had three different things in it to give that color the foresighty had two different things in to give that color so we can separate things using chromatography thank you for watching i really hope you enjoyed this one and you can use it for any of the plants like vegetables and fruits you might have in your garden if you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see some of our other projects, why not check out the videos on our channel? Thank you.